Good morning, how are you? It's Mary Bicknell, and we're going to get started in about a minute or two. I came on live a little early because I wanted to show you my puppy. There he is. It's Ollie. It's Ollie the boy. Today, we're going to be talking about a super exciting uh, thing that you should incorporate into your business. And it's going to be one of those things that's going to give you big impact immediately if you do it right. So it's right now nine o'clock. Grab your cup of tea and let's dive in. So today what you're going to learn about is, first of all, thank you for sending me a bunch of questions. I really appreciate that. And it also allows me to know, you know, what are some of the core, core questions, core, core concerns that you might have related to developing a live talk. So I'm going to share with you everything from who to talk to, what to give away, how to sell from the stage, just a, an overview. And we can always do a deep, deep dive another time if that's of interest to you. Just put it down there, give me a thumbs up, give me a, a little heart. And one of the biggest things we're going to talk about is the fear of visibility, of showing up and thinking, who the hell is going to listen to me while I'm on stage? <clears throat> So for those of you who are new to me, my name is Mary Bicknell, and I am a former psychotherapist. I was a clinical social worker. I have an MSW and a BSW and actually an AA degree. Um, I worked at Johns Hopkins. I've done statistical analysis for the Oklahoma City Capitol, which is like, uh, uh, that's not my favorite thing to do. Um, I developed, I've been in speaking, I've done sales training, I've done behavioral intervention training, I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of women to help them overcome their fears and then catapult their business. As a psychotherapist, I can help, but the, you know, be in love with how we think, right? I'm fascinated with how we think. And so when I work with my clients, and hopefully you will continue to see this, is that it's really the mindset or the psychology, having a great plan and having a system to implement it. Because I'm all about having a big, bold life in business, about you making a difference, about you making more money and about you really making more free time for yourself. That's what this is all about, making more free time. Um, you know, we have this one amazing, glorious life and so many times we're just like grinding it or uh, churning away and it's exhausting and we need to stop doing that. So I know that there's going to be some of you that are going to be watching this on the replay on my blog, and I would love it if you send me your comments, your thoughts, uh, how this was helpful for you it really does um, keep me going, right? So a little bit about doing a live talk. Let me share my first experience and my, and I want to share a couple experiences and, and, uh, tell you a couple stories so that you can see what to do correctly and what never to do again. Don't do this, okay? So my very first live talk I did was, um, and I procrastinated, I'm gonna tell you. I put it off, put it off, put it off, because I was afraid, right? I was afraid and I kept, I was thinking like, okay, I feel like I have something important to say, but maybe I don't. Maybe I don't know what the hell I'm saying. Maybe no one's here to listen to me. Maybe no one's gonna show up in the room. It's gonna be an empty room. And it's kind of like this Facebook Live, right? Where sometimes there's lots of people on there and there's other times people watch the replays and you see how many views there are post doing the live. And there's other times there's people there raising their hand. It's a huge variety. So I thought, ugh, you know, to show, to drive somewhere, to fly somewhere, to go somewhere other than my beautiful office and home, oh, it was a little scary. It was a little daunting. And then to be the one standing in front of a room full of, you know, my first audience was, I want to say it was like 23 people. And I was booked as though it was going to be like 45, 50 people. So in a way, I was a little happy that it was that, that few, the number, but also there's a lesson here. Now there's a couple lessons. Get ready. I almost forgot these lessons to tell you the truth. I'm glad I'm going through this with you. <laughs> um, there was a couple of lessons that I learned <clears throat> on the very first talk I did. And number one is you are responsible for your marketing to a point. So you get yourself booked and 
that person who's booking you seems all excited that you're there. <clears throat> and then there's 23 people instead of 50 people there. Well, unbeknownst to me, she had had a crisis in her family and she had had a death in her family. Hey, Monique, how are you? I'm so glad you're here. She, um, she had a death in her family and she wasn't out there. Hey, <laughs> she wasn't out there, uh, really marketing. And Monique, I'm talking about, <clears throat> excuse me, you are responsible for ensuring that there's marketing that goes on in when you get yourself booked. And I'm relating the story of my first talk where there were supposed to be 50 people and there was 23 people. Unbeknownst to me, the woman who was booking, who booked this, and this was her event, by the way, she had had a tragedy in her family and she didn't, you know, I was not her priority. I wasn't on the top of her list of making sure that the, the audience was filled for Mary Bicknell coming in from out of state. <clears throat> so that really taught me um, the reality that I need to be instrumental also in my marketing. So for example, some of the things I should have and I could have done was I could have posted it all over social media. Hey, you know, I'm going to go speak at such and such place Come and you know, we're going to talk about how, how to have a big, bold life in biz. Join me. Who do you know up there? I could have emailed my list. I could have gone on to some of the free postings in the local city, you know, like Portland, I live in Portland, Oregon, and you know, they have things to do on the weekend, things to do, you know, events in Portland. I could have personally put that on there. I could have, um, done a Facebook invite for people. I could have done, what is that? Evite. I could have done an evite. I could have done that, um, event bright. There's a bunch of other things that I personally could have done to take responsibility to see about getting more people there. And all of these things you can do yourself, which is not really going to take you much time. If you invested 20 minutes in, you know, populating some, um, you know, city calendars and sending a couple emails out, um, it would have been well worth your time because who knows what one client is, what one, what is one client worth to you? That's my little dog in the background, my new puppy. That's what's one client worth to you. I don't know. Some of you might be selling things that are 500 bucks and some of us might be selling things that are 20 grand. So, and everything in between. The point here is be aware of the marketing. That's number one. Number two, your responsibility. Number three is making sure that you put on your calendar to call them prior, like two weeks prior to the event. Hey Sally, how are you? It's Mary Vick now. I was just touching base about, you know, coming up to, you know, New York City to do um, the speaking event. How many people do we have there right now booked so that I can make sure I have enough um, workbooks or flyers or handouts or whatever you call your thing that you're giving to these people? That would have, you know, spun her into a little action. So that was one lesson, one of my very first lessons. The second lesson is really being aware of the energy of the room. So I walk in and it was kind of dark in there and the person was late. Now, by the way, this woman ended up becoming one of my clients. So FYI, if you do these things and you be the leader, right? Being bold, it's not about being obnoxious. It's about being a brave, outgoing leader, deciding to make a difference for people, right? Um, so anyhow, long story short, she comes walking in all like late and flustered. And by the way, time is my thing, as you know, if you follow me, so I'm not big on people being late. Um, but she was late because she had all these family issues and she was distraught and she was chewing up the room. She was like, and I swooped in and I took over because you know what? It became, it's my room now. It's my event. Now I'm not saying that I'm taking over like in a negative way. I'm saying your job is to manage the energy in that room. So I swooped in and I just kind of took her to the side and I was like, Hey, you know, Hey Sally, I drove all the way up here to be at your event. And I am so sorry that you have things going on, but right now you have all these women here with the expectation that I'm going to deliver. And I really want your support in making sure that happens. And that's how I said it. I mean, I'm serious when I'm telling people stuff, but I also say it in a respectful way, right? Shifted the complete dynamic between she and I, of course. And then she looked at me as the leader and then subsequently became my client. And 
And the whole room kind of watched, although I pulled her aside. And then work the room. So that's number three as far as what to do, you know, starting out. Here I am still learning all these lessons on my very first live talk. You know, work that room. You walk around. I always walk around and I always introduce myself. Hey, how are you? My name's Mary and I'm your speaker today. And we're talking about having a big, bold life in business. What do you want to make sure that I speak about? Or is there a question that you have been thinking about before you got here that I want to make sure I can answer? You know, you want to bring, you want to have that uh, rapport building. It makes it so much easier because remember too, those people are in the, I remember what it's like too, to be an audience person and you're looking at the person who's supposed to like talk and you want to learn what they have to say, but you're also thinking, oh God, who are they? Are they going to try and pitch me, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So anyhow, what was the result of that first event? My first $10,000 talk, 10K. But more important than that, more important than having a 10K first talk, which is pretty radical. I mean, let's get real. Because of the way I handled the situation, because of the way I handled the room, I was then um, referred out to do a bunch of other talks. And that ended up, you know, trickling down. That was October, November, December, January, February, March, April. Within six months later, because of that, you know, and I love to track where's my talks coming from. I had a $70,000 a month, $70,000. And let me tell you, that was more than I've ever made in a single year, even as a therapist with all my degrees and clinical license, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Even with that. Um, so that is, you know, those are a couple of really, really important things to be aware of as far as lessons. Okay. I have a, a, a lot of questions here that I want to be able to answer. And of course, if you have any questions while we're, let me, let me see what's going on over here. If you have any questions, make sure that you, um, go ahead and, and pop in. So the very first thing I want to talk about is fear. You know, fear is the big thing that stops us all, isn't it? And this is what I love to talk about. And I could talk about it all day, but the number one reason that we don't get ourselves booked is really the issue of visibility. Now there's plenty of you that love, love, love to be on stage and that's good. And that's bad because sometimes if you're not really prepared and you don't understand the nuances of working that crowd and being the leader of that room, um, you can, you know, frankly waste your time totally waste your time. And we're going to talk about how to ensure that you're not wasting your time. But fear is that that thing that stops us. And so I want to start out by telling you what I kind of think about before I walk into a room or before I get on stage. So I do love having, you know, some song that kind of gets me pump and God knows that you can't always do it. Cause sometimes there's been times I've been sitting at a table, maybe it's a lunch event. And then the, someone at the podium is calling me up. I always make sure that I sneak off a few minutes before that and I just kind of just get myself jazzed. And even if I have to like jump up and down, even if I have to listen to some like ABBA or like I'm coming up, up the world to know, you know, and I, I get into it because one of the things I teach, and by the way, I have a, a free training for you that's um, um, how to book live calls and exactly my script that I use to get myself booked. But let me tell you three important things that are in it. I always tell this to the person who's booking me and write this down. This is really, these are key things for you to remember. Write this down. I say, you know, Sally, one of the things that is most important to me is making sure that your audience is entertained, educated, and of course I just totally went brain dead, entertained, (laughs) educated, and let me think of it in a minute. So entertained, there's nothing worse than a, um, engaged as a third. There's nothing worse than a boring speaker. And God knows we've all had that chicken lunch where we've had a boring speaker. So I want to be entertaining. I am very upbeat. Number two is I'm very engaging. So I like to engage with the the audience and I like for them to engage with each other. Does that sound okay with you, Sally? Do you appreciate, you know, does your group or you, you're that kind of group where we can get, you know, some, some vibe going with each other. Um, entertainment, um, education, oh, and education, no matter what I want to, I want you to know that I want to make sure that they are very educated, no matter whether they ever work with Mary Bicknell now or in the future or not. I promise that they're going to walk away with skills, with to do's, with bold action 
items that they're going to be able to implement into their life and business immediately. So that's my commitment to you because you know what, Sally, I want you to look like a rock star. I want you, I want them to be like, oh my God, thanks Sally for having Mary Bicknell out. She was one of our best speakers and that is what I strive for every single time, Sally. So really make sure you say that on this and because there's so much I'm trying to throw in here, there's a, there's a, this is a sidebar. One of the questions that I was asked um, was, do I book my own speaking gigs or do I have other people? I book my own speaking gigs. Why is that? Now, there's a lot of reasons for that. One is I don't really want to pay somebody um, $1,000 a month, $2,000 a month to try and get me booked or 25% um, forever. So there are people that will book, you know, that's their job. I'll be like, hey, can I get Mary Big Now booked? Uh, they're not getting my energy. I mean, I've been a speaker booker, speaker coordinator for a specific networking group, a local networking group. And I was the one that talked to people and booked them. And whenever I had somebody who just had their hired person do it, God, it, I thought, Jesus, I hope that the speaker's better than this person who's calling to get her booked. So it only takes a few minutes on the phone to get yourself booked. And you remember your job as a salesperson, as a marketer is to start the moment you talk to someone. And if you, if that woman is excited about having you, you have sold her right off the bat. That's key. I've even gone and people have interviewed me in person, which is like, I don't always recommend this, but this happened to end up being like one of my top sales. It was like a hundred thousand dollars in sales. So of course I went ahead and actually both of those people who spoke with me became clients. Now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should think about how many of these people who booked me became clients. And it's because you're starting your sales process immediately by being on the phone with them. So that's one thing. Number two is, um, when you hire somebody, either there, you're giving them a monthly fee, like a thousand bucks a month or something, or you have to give them 25% forever. What is that in perpetuity, in perpetuity, in perpetuity, whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Forever. Meaning that tw- that $10,000 that I did that day, she would have gotten $2,500, right? My first talk to Ted Grant that day, she would have, that speaker booked, um, how long do you engage? I'll tell you that in a minute. And, and also I'll give the link where I can, where you can get that um, exact script. Um, not only is it 25, she would have gotten $2,500 that day, but that talk landed me my first 70 K month. What's 25% of $70,000, 15 grand. Eh. Those that day, that month, I got several other speaking gigs and it all came from that original one. So they would have made like shit tons of money and new. So my point is get on the phone, um, get the script from me. It's really very simple. And there you go. Okay. Why do you really need, um, what does that mean? A lot. Oh yeah. That is a lot of money. That's too much damn money. Money. Um, what is the, what is one of the best things about doing live talks? You get immediate feedback. Okay. So this is why I want to really encourage you to, um, let me, let me pause for a minute. Can you hear that noise? Do you hear that buzzing? Because downstairs they're working on my kitchen, redoing my whole remodel. And they were not supposed to be working. So no, nobody can hear it. Okay. Um, you get immediate feedback. So, so many times, how many times are we doing that thing where we're like, I have this great talk. I have this great product and da, 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 da. And then we try and try it online. We build out a whole webinar, which by the way, I don't encourage you to do that. Please talk to me before you do all that. Um, we build out this whole webinar and we put all this energy into it and then we never really have feedback. And so being able to do a live talk with people, and I mean, not like an electronic live talk. I don't mean like a live stream. I don't mean like Facebook live. I don't mean Periscope and any of that live stuff. I mean, literally like human bodies, like you're watching their body language that you, you are able to look into their eyeballs you get immediate feedback on, on whether your joke works on whether they're buying the product or the thing that you're offering. Um, you know, are they chuckling? Are they laughing? Are you missing something? Are they engaging or is it flat? So I really want to encourage you, like, I I believe you can do it, right? I really encourage you to get yourself booked. Now on that too, people always say, where can I get yourself booked? I always tell people, you know, go three, start three hours away from your house. 
Because if you screw up, guess what? You ain't going to see those people in, in Safeway. So don't worry about it, right? That's what we worry about. We were like, oh my God, what if I make a complete idiot of myself? What if I'm a fool? <gasps> right? It's all of our fears, which I'm going to do such a huge training on mindset and fears because I love, 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 love that. Okay? I promise you, no matter what your experience is doing that live talk, it's going to be so valuable on multiple levels, on that mindset psychology piece, on planning, like how did you plan it correctly? Did you know all of the, and the system. And when I talk about the system, I mean the system of your actual talk, your system of delivering your potential product or freebie to the audience, your system of follow-up. Like there's a lot, there's a lot. You know, I'm a believer in mindset first, psychology first, because let me get really clear. Business is simple. We screw it up by making it overcomplicated. Let's get really real. There's only so many things you need to do in your business. You need to figure out who you want to work with, what they need, sell them what they want, give them what they need, <clears throat> follow up, follow through. We muck it up and make it so much more time consuming and difficult and uh, 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 all that. I am a master at being able to like, you know, shortcut stuff like, cause I'm all about time. That's my deal, right? That's why speaking is great for you. Um, okay. So some of the other things, instant feedback, instant client, instant sales, instant money in your hand, instant money in your hand. I've had where I have been selling my, I have a product, big bowl life and biz plan. I encourage you to buy it. It's $497. It will change your life. I don't have any doubts about that. I have plenty of testimonials about that. But, and so my talk, by the way, the hint, 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 is all about the modules are all about the steps or really mine is about breakthroughs, all about the breakthroughs that you have. And I take a little piece out of every module and that's what I talk about. So when I go to actual make the offer, it's seamless. It's not like blah, 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 blah. <gasps> Oh, and by the way, here's this product. Here's this widget. Buy this. No, it's very seamless. Maybe you saw the training that I did called 10 Ways to Recycle, Repurpose, Reuse Your Product or Process. I'm telling you, overlap, can brand consistently reuse your stuff. Once you have a program or a process that you do with your client, you can do so much stuff with it. And then you never have to worry about what's my freebie? What's my opt-in? What should I blog about? It's no, it's like so easy. Stop complicating it. Anyhow, instant clients and sales. There's been plenty of times where I'm selling my $497 program and today you get it for only $297. Um, and people don't want that when they work with me. They, they come right up and they're like, here's my credit card. How do I work with you privately? So it's like you get in, in the, there's not much more instant feedback than somebody literally walking up to you and saying, how much do you charge to work with you privately? Okay. It does help grow your list. It does of course help build relationships. I'm looking down cause I have a big thing of notes here. Um, you get instant money, right? You know, you're closing people at the back of the room. They're handing you their credit card. Boom. There's been plenty of times I've walked out with thousands of dollars. That's crazy. Um, collapse time. So a, a collapse time by being in front of your perfect ideal client. So this is a really important piece right now in my business. I'm comparing what I did, um, when I've done speaking full time, which is over $200,000 in sales compared to now I'm really looking at building online. Now, of course I'm still having some talks. Um, but I'm doing that comparison because there's been times where I've flown out and I've stayed somewhere and I'm away a couple days from my family. You know, by the time I fly, by the time I eat, by the time I rent a car, because I always like to stay a day or two usually, after, you know, or a day before or a day after to do something fun in the area if it's new to me. Um, plus it's merry time, right? You know? Um, so, but I also, I'm in that comparison place, right? Or you to be in that comparison place of, um, is it worth it? As opposed to, you know, if it costs me $2,000 to go away to do a talk, how much is my ROI? What is my return on investment for that time away from my family and time, you know, paying that first class ticket, excuse me, compared to paying three grand in Facebook ads, what would be my conversion? And so that's one of the things to look at. Um, 
So how can I, my business and what I do with clients is all about how can I help them collapse time? On the, one of the questions that I have here, <clears throat> and thank you again for everybody that sent them in. One of the questions that I have here is like, how many book talks should I book? And I want to tell you when you're first starting out, you need to book yourself everywhere. Only in the beginning. That's a really big caveat. Only in the beginning. Only when you're actually in the mode of practicing. Only in the mode place when you are trying to get feedback, only when you're trying to refine it, only when you're trying to figure out after that, Hey Jenny, after that, um, then you need to be very specific about who you're speaking in front of. And I will give you an example of that. Let me write that down so I don't forget. Um, even though I don't know how I could possibly forget. And okay, actually I'm going to give you two examples where, you know, I kind of, I kind of, did not, um, qualify the audience. All right. So let me give you, let me just start rattling off and answering some of these questions. How do I find or create opportunities to speak? You know, there are right now, what is it? It's like nine thirty, nine something, nine twenty four, four fourteen seven twenty seventeen. And let me tell you what, right now uh, there's hundreds of people giving talks across the country. I don't even know how across the world hundreds and I'm talking live in-person talks. So how do you create the opportunity is by asking. And you know, as women, we don't ask. And let me tell you, I wish I had a specific directory and actually I'm putting together a directory because no one has done this I, that I have found. I'm putting a directory together about where to find, you know, different um, speaking gigs. But depending on your topic, they're, they're everywhere from networking groups, business associations, let me give you those examples. Um, so I, I've done talks in front of, and I'll get this. I, I drive a Jeep, a Hemi Jeep, V8. Love it. Touch the gas. So I live in Portland. I, Portland is also very eco-friendly. I drive a Jeep, I said. One of my talks was to business women, business women who love cycling. So this was a group of women here in Portland who don't own cars. They don't own a car. They own bicycles and they, they bicycle everywhere. Well, first of all, I don't like bicycles, but I was like, I'm going to book myself anywhere that they're going to let me open my mouth. So I go in there, blah, blah, blah. Long story short, close the client, a private client. So you never know that's starting out. You don't always want to necessarily do that because let me tell you, um, let's talk about qualifying. So when you, when she asked about how do I find or create opportunity to speak in the beginning, Three, go, you know, start like three hours around your home, you know, a three hour radius and book, get yourself booked everywhere, anywhere that they want to speak or there's lunch and learns, there's networking events, there's depending on your, you know, depending on your topic, you know, real estate offices do, do stuff like women's association, business associations, chiropractic, the dental association, all of these kind of things. There's all usually a monthly something. Um, and in that free um, giveaway, I, I will outline this in much more detail. Let me give you an example of one where I did not qualify. Now, as you start growing and you get better at your talks and you know what your conversion is, you want to make sure that you qualify the audience or who's going to be in the audience, right? You want to qualify them. Let me give you two examples of where I did not do this and I made no money. And one time it cost me heavily because I was away from my family. Okay. So one time I was here in Portland and I was referred by someone who I, who I know and who I respected. And, um, she wasn't able to do a talk and the event was for like entrepreneurial women. And so I talked to the speaker, the woman who put, was putting on this event. It was her first event, but it was local. It was like, I don't know, 20 minutes from here. And it was an easy, quick 45 minute talk or whatever. So I, I was like, whatever, I will do it. Never again. So what happened is I go in there and they're all in the stripper industry. Okay. So what I mean by that, that they're all in the stripper industry, I walk in and there's like tables around the stage where they have their products like the leather boots and like the feathers for the hair and you know, bustiers. And there was actually a body painter there. So a woman comes out with pasties on her nipples and little booty shorts. And there was a body painter there and paid painted, um, a, you know, a waist centered corset on her. 
I was like, what the F am I, you know, this is crazy. I mean, and then you have to just kind of laugh. And then I had to be come from my heart, you know, knowing that these women probably are not going to pay me thousands of dollars to coach them. So I had to come with my heart, right? And really just deliver, even though they were all staring at me when I was talking about creating a big, bold life in business and, you know, what's your product and dream big and get over your money shit and, you know, crap, break through your fears. Um, I didn't qualify. I didn't say who, so it was great that you're developing an event for entrepreneurial women. Give me an example of some kind of, some of the businesses that will be represented in. Now she did say, you know, the, oh, there's going to be a designer here, um, you know, a fashion designer and a, an author, but it was kind of peripheral, you know, it was, it wasn't like she's an author that talks about like, you know, getting it on. This is, you get, you get my point. The second time I really feel like I made a big mistake is I booked my, now this is really important. This is really important when you're starting out, like, get, get, like pay attention if you're like off track. I scheduled this talk, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, six months down the road. So I booked the talk in April. I held the talk in October. By the time October rolled around, that audience was not my ideal audience anymore. I had grown so significantly in my business that the women in that audience, which I thought I had qualified, they were not my ideal client anymore. And it was crushing because I had been away from my family. I'd already been to an event and then I went to this event. So I was away from my family for like four or five days. So then I'm standing in front of a room of like over a hundred women and I could not engage them. And that was pretty shocking. Now, there's still some of those women who are on my list. There are still a couple of these women, and, and I'm sure they're going to be watching this, so they are not going to know who they are, who eventually are going to become clients. Yes, did I sell a couple $500 products there? Sure. But, you know, I didn't want to be away from my family for days to sell like 1500 bucks. Who cares? 1500 bucks. Now, if one of these converts one day to one of my six-month private clients, will it be worth it? Mm, I don't know. You know, cause that was, what happened was actually I left that event. I go to the airport. I start crying on the airport floor and I call my accountability partner. And I was just like, I can't relate it. I didn't qualify these people. So when I say qualify, who's going to be in the audience, I want you to think about who your perfect ideal client is. And if you don't know who your perfect ideal client is, then we will definitely do a training on that because you need to have that tight, tight, um, Monique says, so when you do the talks, do you market several products at once or do you invite them to your list? I will go over that in just a minute. Good question. Excellent question. I definitely, we're definitely going to hit on that. Um, actually, let me go ahead. I'm looking at all these other questions and I can, um, kind of weave that in right now. So this is the bottom line. You must walk away with, from every talk with new leads hopefully money, right? Clients and new business opportunities. These are the three things that you want to walk away with no matter what, period, period, period. New leads. In other words, build your list. It'd be great to sell product, um, and new speaking opportunities. So the question is, do you market several products at once or one? I am a believer. You only offer one something. So when, so there's a couple ways that this works. Number one is not every, every place that you can go and actually pitch a product. And when I mean pitch a product, I mean, you're standing on stage and you're talking about, and my five week program is blah, blah, blah. Or I do one-on-one. -on -one, oh. Never do this. I believe don't offer one-on-one -on -one coaching. These people just saw you talk for 20 or 45 minutes and you're like, and get, let's get on the phone and do one-on-one. -on -one. And I do one-on-one -on -one coaching and you know, it's five grand for three months. Like these people don't know you unless you're Jesus or something. I mean, well, I mean, I've said that people do come up to me. So maybe I'm Jesus. They do come up to me, but I didn't pitch private coaching. Never pitch something that does not fit the time frame allotted. Right? So to pitch something that's less than $2,000 in an hour, that's okay. But if you're going to try and quote pitch something more, something of higher value, then don't do it. It's in, it's too short of time. Unless you know your closing ratio, unless you've got your damn talk down so tight that no matter what room you're in, you're closing 20 or 30%, no matter what the hell you're selling, 
you know, great. Oprah can walk into any room and 95% of the people are going to buy pretty much whatever she has to say, right? Same Tony Rada. And like, there's people that are really, um, have done it numerous times. So until you know your ROI or your conversion rate, don't try and sell a big ticket item, but also you want to build relationships. So to that point, one thing, so you're not always allowed to, um, pitch something now saying that there's a way that I kind of get around that without being hard salesy. And this is how you do it. And then I'll talk about the freebie in a second. Um, I would say something like, you know, Sally, one of the things I want to point out is people always want to have more information when I'm done giving my talk, which is really fantastic. So what I want to do is I just want to little share a little bit about how they can get more information from me. One of the things, and it could be like this, one of the things that's coming up is, a, is I'm doing a local workshop, or one of the things that's coming up is I'm doing a webinar that's talking about this product. Or um, one of the things that's coming up is this Big Bold Life and Biz Plan, I'm actually running a group online for that. And I will, I'll share a little bit of that information about it. And if she's like, oh no, you can never say a price or never do that, you know, then you really need to think about, do you want that opportunity? You have to weigh that. I'm at the point now, like I never talk for, if I can't talk for like at least 45 minutes, I don't go. Like I don't waste my time at a 20 minute talk unless it's local, unless I know that there's people there, unless maybe there's a hundred people there or something. Um, so this is the other thing too is, you can say, you know, one of the things, Sally, too, I want to tell you what I do is I always give everybody a little free something because they may decide that, you know, they, they need a little bit more information. So what I'm going to be giving away today is, um, this is something you discuss when you're booking. Yes. So when, um, this is part of that sales script or that booking script, excuse me, I'll put a link in, um, in a little while. Um, so uh, let me back up. So it sounds like this. It's like, Sally, I want to let you know that, you know, at the end of every talk, people usually want to have some more information. So it's a couple things I want to tell you I'm going to do. I'm going to give them um, this really great workshop. It's called Bold Life, Big Profit. And it's a money map. And it really helps people walk through their money situation. And it's a workbook and it's also an audio Okay. So I'm giving, I'm going to give that to them, but sometimes people want something just even a little deeper. And so I do have an online program that's coming up called the big bold life and biz plan. It's a five week program. So I'll just tell them how that they can get some more information about that. Is that all right with you? And typically they're like, yes. And then sometimes they're like, Oh, tell me more about that. How much does that cost? Well, you know what, Sally, normally it's $497, but I would love to be able to offer your group um, a special rate just as a thank you for coming for two ninety seven. Is that okay with you? And she's probably going to say yes, more than likely when you present it like that. So then when you're stand, so that's what you do on the phone when you're getting yourself booked. Okay. Don't forget to tell them you're going to be offering the audience something, whether it's just your freebie because you want to have leads or whether you're going to be actually making a full on sales presentation. Okay. Um, and then also one of the things I always do, no matter what, this is cause this is just an easy thing to do is when I'm saying, um, I'm, so I'm standing up there and I have a special way that people fill out, you know, I have a special format for, for, you know, the handout that I give people. Um, and it's designed using psychology of sales and where they can take notes, but also I have testimonials on there. I have the product on the back. So I say something like, okay, everybody, I want you to pick up your paper, turn it over. And at the top, you're going to see where, and of course I have the same form, which I guess I would have been smart to actually have one to show you. But, um, I think that's actually in one of my programs, that whole entire thing. But, um, you know, I want you to go ahead and sign your, you know, I'm giving away the bold life and big money map and go ahead and write your name and your email legibly. Cause I know you want to get it. So make sure you're legible. I always say that cause you know, they write like sloppy as hell. Um, so go ahead and do that and see below. You're going to see, uh, this offer for uh, my program that's coming up. Actually it's starting May 1st and it's called the big bold life and biz plan. And it goes in such deeper dive to what we've talked about today. You know, I really appreciate that Sally's let me come here. Normally, if you go on my website right now, you can buy that program, not even live. Like you can listen to the home study version for $4.97. But right now we're going to be running this live May 1st. And I'm saying May 1st because today's April 14th, just to give you an example. Um, and I want you to scratch out $4.97 and write $2.97. So anybody who decides today 
to sign up for that, we'll get that for $2.97. Great. One last little gift I want to give to you. For those of you who are just like, oh, you know, Mary, I really have some private questions I'd love to ask you. Put a little star next to your name and I'll have my assistant send you my personal calendar and we can schedule um, a time to talk about how you can really have a bold life and biz breakthrough session with me. And this is completely complimentary, 30 minutes where I'm going to help you, you know, figure out, <clears throat> you know, what, where you're stuck, what the mindset stuff is causing you issues and there we go. Okay. So that's how we do that. Let me check the time for you all. Cause I could really talk about this all day long. <clears throat> um, okay. So let me just start going through your questions. Yeah. 940. So we're just going to break in a couple minutes and, um, let me see. I have, I know I have to know what the pitch, no pitch boundaries are before I go in. Yeah. No matter, but you're also, Monique, you're also establishing yourself as letting them know, you know, Sally, every time I do a talk, people want more information. And so I want to be able to offer them. So you're doing that, but you're also making sure that you're getting their name. Okay. So whether it's little slips of paper on the, the table, or you can say to her, you know, how many people are you planning to have to the event? She's like, Oh, 130. Great. I always like to supply people with a workbook um, because I really, it's really important. I told you, I want to make sure they're educated and I want them to be able to write things down. And also that's their take with, it has my contact information. One of the things I want to ask you though, since I'm going to be giving away a little gift to them called bold life, big profit money map, is there a way that I can go ahead and get the full email list after the event? ask because some people are like oh yeah that's no big deal and then they give you like the spreadsheet with the names on it oh my god that's so much easier than typing in 150 or trying to scan that stuff in to send to your assistant etc all right let me just run through some of your questions some of you have questions because you like to do booked um paid speaking gigs today i'm really talking only about live in-person free talks. I'm a believer in doing free talks because I feel like you can monetize those better because now I say that, but there's plenty of people who are making five grand on stage. I make more than five grand typically when I'm at an event. So you have to kind of weigh that out. You know, sometimes I'll do a free, I like to do free because then it gives me a better opportunity to pitch or sell. Okay. But I know so many people are like, I want to be a paid speaker. I want to be a keynote speaker. That's great. First start out with free so you can master it. Nobody's going to be paying you. I promise you. If you don't, if you haven't developed your stage presence, if you haven't gotten it tight, if you don't know what your message is, right? Can I get some thumbs up? Can I get some hearts that you really dig it? Hey, Lynn, right? Does that make sense? Like nobody's going to pay you five grand to come on stage if you haven't mastered it. Um, how do I lead the audience into working with me? Exactly like I already shared, like, Hey everybody, you know, I have this free, I have this gift that I came here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That helps me out a lot. I'm so glad that this is of great value to you because I never want to waste your time or mine. Um, so how do I get the audience into working with me further? Exactly how I shared earlier, rewind about, you know, today before I leave, I want to make sure that I'm giving you something, um, because I know you want to take it deeper, et cetera, et cetera. And let me give you this free goodie. Here you go. Hold up the paper, blah, blah, blah. So go back and, and watch that. What kind of follow-up is necessary? Girl, uh, follow-up is the money. If you don't have a very, very tight system, I call, so let me give you an example. I have something whenever people opt in, then I put them through what I call a hard nurture sequence. Hard nurture means I'm pressing a little bit more than I normally maybe would. Meaning I, every single email in this sequence, there's a direct call to action. That's what I mean by hard nurture. I mean, and it's like selling the big world life and this plan or it's selling a call. It's like, you know, you want more about fear. You want more about money than, you know, the big world life and this plan is here's the sales page. Boom. Um, if you don't have follow up, you might as well have not even gone. And let me say this again. If you don't follow up and you don't remember to send people stuff, or you don't call them, or you don't send a thank you note to the woman who booked you, which you should go ahead and do that the day she books you, by the way, cards are like, you know, old school, but hello, we don't get them anymore. So we really like them. If you don't follow up, it's a waste of time. Don't waste your time. And 
follow-up is almost as scary, isn't it, as getting yourself booked. So I'm going to do a whole training on just follow-up and exactly how to do that with email sequencing, both live and when you're doing stuff online. Because really that follow-up process is very, very similar. You might just say, hey, I met you at this live thing versus, hey, thanks for opting into my freebie, blah, blah, blah. Um, how do I ensure there is an audience? I talked about that at the beginning. Your job is to make sure that you are marketing yourself also. But let me tell you, I've canceled. I will tell you, I've canceled. Um, I was going to fly cross country. Now, granted, it was back home, but whatever. I was going to fly cross, cross country. Two weeks before, I said to them, I don't even see this. I was just like, hey, I didn't. Like, hey, Sally, how are you? This is Mary. I'm checking in with you um, about the talk that I'm going to be doing in a couple weeks. And I, I don't see it on your website. And this is what she said. Oh, well, we haven't put it on our website yet because we're promoting the person after you. We're, we're bringing her in as a big speaker. And I said... Um, you know, part of the thing that we talked about was making sure that there, I'm flying cross country and you know, that there's going to be a lot of people. Do you have anybody registered right now? And she's like, there's just a few people. And I said, you know what? I'm going to have to pass. I'm sure you have people in your um, group that would love to be able to have a last minute speaking opportunity. And I'm going to pass on this because I'm not going to waste my time. And I know that could sound like very unprofessional, but at the end of the day, it's your time. And what is worse? What is worse going somewhere, spending thousands of dollars being away from your family to an event that somebody said there was going to be like 75 to 80 people of your perfect client and then them not even promoting it at all. I mean, wouldn't you just be nauseated to be in front of a room of like three people? Now saying that, um, yeah. Yeah. Saying that if it was local, I might still go because it's local and I never know who I'm going to meet there. And if it's local, what's an hour out of my day? It's not that big of a deal. Um, how far in advance do I have to connect with someone to be a speaker? I would be, it's like April now I would be booking her, right? She was not respecting my time. R exactly. And so again, it goes back to the very first one where, you know, she had, you know, the, you, you are not their priority. Now saying that they love getting, uh, now I've had other people who are like thrilled and they're like, they put me up in a hotel, they buy me dinner, all of these wonderful things. So, you know, you, you play a part in all of this. How far in advance, like get booking right now, get on the phone today, get yourself booked out. So I don't know that you can do it too far in advance as as long as you are confident, you understand perfectly who your ideal client is and the people in that audience are your perfect ideal client. Because if you book it out too far ahead, like I gave you one of my failed examples, right? I had grown so much that I was just like, go for it, ladies. Like, boop, boop, boop. I was all excited and I was really like, you know, I was bringing it and I was like, be bold, go for it. And these people were just like, oh, they were more hobby business, hobby business people. Do I need a media kit to hand out? Yes. So it's, I don't really call it a media kit. I call it a speaker page and I will put one um, up as an example, but basically it's your picture. It's the title of your talk, bullet points. In other words, what are they getting out of this? Why the hell am I coming? What am I going to, and testimonials. And you need to have that, right? And it needs to be pretty. It needs to be branded. Really, that's the media kit. I know some people have um, videos. Great. If you have a sizzle reel, which is a, like a composite of videos, maybe a little piece like this, I'd have a, a Facebook Live and I'd have pictures of myself like speaking live or I'd have, um, you know, video. Mm. Do not do this. I had a client once and unfortunately she paid thousands of dollars to a speaker, like a professional speaker person. And the unfortunate thing was I didn't feel like her sizzle reel landed because what it was is her standing in an empty theater and her talking, you know, looking down at an audience. So the whole time she's speaking to no one. And you know what? You people can feel that. You can feel that. I guess it's kind of the same thing when I think about Facebook Live. To be honest, you know, sometimes if I come on and there's like nobody there at first, I realize though I'm also like other people. I don't always have time to watch it on a Friday. I'm doing it Friday morning at nine because guess what? My family's out of town. And so the rest of the weekend, baby, I'm going to yoga today. I'm getting my feet done. Like it's beautiful out. 
So I wanted to work a little and then have the rest of the weekend literally to myself. Um, how long is a typical talk? You know, every place is different. When you're starting out, try 20 minutes, but 20 minutes is really hard to convert. 45 minutes is really the, um, a juicy spot, right? If it's longer than 45 minutes and they say you've got an hour, do not go to the hour. Make sure you go, you stop at 45 minutes and for all your bullet points. And then maybe you have like five minutes of your pitch or do 10 minutes of your pitch. So at, at the 50 minute mark, you're like, thank you all so much. Why don't you meet me back in the room? I want to be able to meet each one of you individually. And those of you who want to go ahead and join me for um, May 1st for the Big Bold Life and Biz Plan, I'd love to be able to answer those questions. Never go to the minute because those people are looking at the clock like, okay, she got three more minutes. You don't want to, you don't want to push your clothes. You want to give people space and breathe room and you want to demonstrate respect. Even though we could talk all day, that's why I'm conscious of what time it is now for you and for me, for my plans, right? What element do I, elements do I have to include in my talk? Uh, I'm not sure that I fully understand that question. So please put that in the comments below and I will come back later today and answer any questions. Who do I contact to set up the talk? We talked about that at the beginning as far as Google's your best friend and I'll give you some other tips. I will, so, um, uh, um, how do I get reimbursed for going to the, uh, speaking event? You know, that is one of the things that you can negotiate during your conversation. And, you know, some people offer, some people say, what's your rate? You have to make a decision on your, what your rate you might want to say, depending on what you're doing is it's negotiable or, you know, you pay mileage or you fly me in or, you know, everyone, everything is a little bit different. And I'm happy to, is the talk designed to seed the servant? Oh God, yeah. Okay, so definitely you're seeding. Actually, remember you're seeding from the moment that you pick up that phone and you get yourself booked. You're seeding this. I am marketing my business by coming to speak at your thing. All right. So there's. Let's. I'm always. Let's speak the elephant in the room. The reality is everybody who's standing up in front of somebody, they're getting paid for it. They're not. Everybody's not just so gracious where they're all taking time to just stand up and do something. So the whole time I'm seating as I'm walking through. Well, I guess I could even say I'm seating this, although it wasn't necessarily planned. It was truly, um, you know, it was truly I'm here to teach you, right? But I've been talking about what the Big Bowl Life and Biz Plan, my five-week program. Actually, I'm expanding it to it might be six or seven modules now. I'm pumped. It's getting updated. It's going to be rock and roll. It's so good for you guys. Oh, it's I'm beyond the moon about it. So I've been seeding it. I have nothing to pitch to you right now. You can opt in to get the free script. Yeah, I'll leave that in here. But um, yes, you're always seeding. So let me give you one example and then we'll close. Um, while I'm saying, you know, I'm really excited to be here. Thank you so much. Today, what we're going to be talking about is the Big Bold Life and Biz Plan. And I believe this is the most important thing for women. And I'm going to be sharing five steps for you on how you can truly change your life and change your business. And I want you to know at the end of this talk, I'm going to give, be giving you away a little bit of free, a little freebie, because the truth is every time I go and talk somewhere, which is kind of cool, people want more information and I want to make sure that I can give it to you. So what I want you to do now is open up your little workbook because I'm going to dive in. So I say something along those lines. So then as I'm going through maybe my modules and like I have the big money breakthrough module, which is like rock and roll. Cool. So I might be saying, you know, blah, 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 blah. Here it is my big money, you know, and we're going to talk about your money story. And let me give you an example of one of my clients. You know, she had a radical transformation where she didn't want to close clients because her mom was loud and obnoxious and now blah, 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 she can close. Or one of the things I love working with my clients on about their money story I give them this quiz that I'm getting ready to give you. This is what I'm telling them. I'm getting ready to give you a little taste of the quiz that I give my, my private clients. But let me give you an example of one of my clients, Jen, a new client, younger in her business. After we worked through her money story, she closed two clients recently at a 33.3% in increase. Oh, that's very exciting. So see, the whole time you can give case studies and case studies and examples, those are seeding. 
you know, and you can also say like, I'm really excited about this program. I've added a new module to this. Let me tell you what it is. It's, um, you know, all about uh, time, the big time breakthrough. And if you decide to join me in this program that's coming up, and I'll tell you more about that later, one of the things you're going to learn about time is blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, the, the workbook is really, it's just, I call it a trifold and it's, it's, it's on a 11 by it's on, it's actually called, um, tabloid size paper and I will post one. I, I actually, I'll post one in the file so that you can see it so you can get a really good example. So I hope this was really, I, I don't want to, I, I hate when people say, I hope this was helpful because I know it was helpful because it was a shit ton of tips. So please go back and listen to it. Thank you, Monique. I appreciate that. You love this. Um, yeah. And it's not just rigid, you know, how many pages is the workbook? Man? The key is, is that the workbook is more about them being able to jot some notes down, them being able to have something to take with them that has your information at the bottom. And also one of the pieces of paper is testimonials. And then on the back is where they can fill out their, their freebie information. So that's what it's for. So great guys, please um, listen to this again. Put some comments below. Ask me what questions that I've missed. I am so excited for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for um, joining today. And I want you to know that, you know, speaking is fun. And we're going to be talking more about how to overcome the fear of visibility. And let me tell you, when you show up and you do speaking, remember, I want you to really own this. When you become afraid and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to speak. Really, you are an expert at what you are there to deliver. So if you're a health person and you're in an audience of you know, doctors, you know what? You're an expert on how you work with your people. I'm an, I, I might be a psychotherapist by training, right? And, you know, a salesperson and a business strategist and a mentor and all this kind of, and God knows how many freaking of those are in the world, but I'm an expert at how I deliver it to my clients. So that alleviates some of my fears that I've had before showing up and being visible. Because of course, if I was like, well, God, this person, you know, is so much better and this person's way, but they're an expert in how they deliver. You own your expertise in how you deliver. You be a leader in how you deliver. And I promise that alleviates so much of the fear. I promise that really makes a big difference. And, um, and I look forward, I, I look forward to doing another workshop with you all about fear and removing that. So you can have your own big fear breakthrough. That's seating right there. Monique, that's seating the big fear breakthrough. Look for it. Cause that is definitely a new module in the big book life and business plan. And it's, it is mind psychology, mind shift, radically changing. So have a fantastic day. Ah, put down there what your title of your talk is, your questions, and rock and roll. Have a fabo rest of the day. Bye, guys.